Greetings and welcome to another episode of Play on Plug TV. I'm your host, Enrico Nardini. We're here at Gen Con Indie 2013. I'm at the Geek and Company booth, and I really wanted to stop by after I checked out after I got a chance to check out some of your products because one thing about this company that I think is awesome is you guys are doing something that I feel like more companies should be doing. You guys are kind of shepherding in a new generation of gamers. It's yeah. great to be a gamer. We are all about tabletop games, that's our whole site, but how do you get the next generation into gaming, and it's I, I think we're, you guys are doing a, like something very special. So I'm here with Diana Presnell of Geek and & Company, and uh, let's talk a little bit about it. And sure. I might as well start with what we've got out right now, the Surreal Mother, Mother Geek. It's um, sort of a primer for geeklings, is what we decided to call it. Um, we've created an individual poem for each topic of geek interest. So we've got your zombies, and we've got basic geekery, and pirates and ninjas, science fiction, electronic gadgets, those are important to everybody. Fantasy, take your pick. We have 15 separate poems, and each one teaches a different topic of interest to almost all geeks. In the back of the book, there's also a brief, child-friendly explanation of each topic that you have to sort of find the hidden egg for. And once you found the hidden egg, then you come back and you read the information. So it's educational and informational. We also have it available in an iPad app that's completely interactive. So you can, most things make noise or they do something. And so it's a lot of fun. That's already in the iPad market. So those are what's available for, in terms of just priming your geek for basic geekdom. Now, when they reach around... <laughs> four or five years of age, you have an entry-level RPG product yep. for them, too. We uh, based it on Mother Geek because, obviously, hopefully, they'll read Mother Geek first, and so it'll be using familiar characters. So what we did there was we created the Mother Geek Grow With Me RPG series, and it's actually a series that my partner and I created together, and it's to help usher in, step-by-step, -step, a child into the world of gaming. This one starts off with your real basics. You've got your what is dice, how do you use them, why do you use them, how do you win, you know, how to have fun, you know, what is role playing. And it's got suggestions in italics for the parents so that parents can kind of, it's, it's not done by anybody that has a professional degree, it's just me as a parent who's had experience with my kids and what worked with them. Mm -hmm. So it's just the examples that I use with my children and hopefully most parents will know their own kids enough to be able to make it work with their kids, because everybody's child is totally different, <laughs> even among your own family. <laughs> Absolutely, and one of, the, one of the things about this that's so wonderful is, you know, promoting imagination play, the, it's very well documented, the ability to, increases the ability to use language, problem solve, interact with your fellows, uh, like, so really very cool. It also helps with math, because they have to be able to determine, is a six bigger than a three? is a nine bigger than a four, you know, and so it'll all help with math skills as well as just family bonding time. Because when you're sitting around doing something that dad and mom love, obviously the kids are going to feel that appreciation for whatever it is their parents are doing, and they're going to want to do it too. And if they're having fun, it'll encourage them to continue doing it. And it can become a family event. You know, who needs family dinners on Friday nights anymore when you can have family gaming on Saturdays? Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Now, on top of this, there are some other products, including um, an RPG for the for this world of Caljor, and one of those is also oriented towards young towards mm -hmm. a younger population. Now, this is more like this is all almost staged up right after that. Exactly. It, that's around. It's listed around four to seven. This is around like eight to fourteen. Pretty much. Yeah. It's it's what you do when you've got. Somebody who kind of gets the basics, their math skills are where they need to be, you know, they understand the basics of math. So this is almost like playing a video game, except it's an RPG. We've sort of stripped away some of the real difficult concepts, and we've left some of the basic prefab characters and concepts that you can then build upon using, you know, you can get new guns and new weapons and bigger ships, and so you can upgrade your character that way, but you're still only using a handful of dice, and it's a little bit less broad. You know, there's some, they've also got some campaigns in here that you can kind of run through with this one. So there's some pre-made campaigns to sort of help uh, an older child get accustomed to what more in-depth storytelling is. You know, that continual, okay, well, you went on this adventure, and then that adventure came to an end, you know, or did it? You know, and so the next part of the adventure happens, and then that, that concept of the continual storytelling is brought into this one. It's not just sort of one-off events the way the little one is. Now, this uh, Caljor, there's also a just fully fleshed out RPG for mm -hmm. once. So once again, it's like it's kind of in stages. But for the for the um, for the people watching at home, 
what are what can you give a little just an overview of the world for those who are uh, who'd want to know more about just Calador in general? Well, Calador it was born out of a novel series my partner wrote, Paul Lell, and it's kind of a great mix of both fantasy and science fiction. It, you get a lot of variety in it that you don't normally get with an RPG. It's very high science fiction, sort of a shadow run futuristic society that have created a vi virtual reality video game that everybody utilizes to communicate across the galaxy with everyone else. And inside that virtual reality world, which is very Matrix-like in depth, is a very high fantasy kind of wow environment. So you can either play entirely in the game system, an all fantasy campaign, sort of like D&D, or you can play out of that in the real world, which is a very high science fiction one, or you can play in both and have your characters going in and out between the two. It's kind of like there's a metagame within the game. Exactly. And it's a lot of fun because it gives you a lot of variety and freedom that you don't have. Not to mention the art is incredibly stunning as well. That he put a lot of work into making sure all of his artists put very descriptive pieces for what he was trying to put together. So. Diana, if people want to find out more, where's the best place you would send them? Well, of course, here at Booth 3, 1349 for the next two days. Right. Um, and then Geek and Company is our website. So G33KNCO.com. Excellent. Folks, we're also on the Internet. Check out PlayUnplugged.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And leave a comment below because, you know, we love that stuff. And lastly, uh, we'll see you at Gen Con. Next time. Like it's not like if we if we if we botch this we can't re-record it. That's the beauty. It's not like this is going directly live. All right.